everybody and welcome Hello. to uh, Amazon Fireside Chat. Um, it's uh, Gio here today uh, with me, Anisha, and we are part of the Amazon App Store team for Apps and Games. Um, so yeah, hey Gio. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me, Anisha? I can hear you. How's it going? Great, great, good, good, good. Yeah, because I think this time I will not have like any kind of technical issue. I hope so. Like <laughs> I'm my new setup. So, <laughs> so everybody, I think. Today is a really exciting day because we will talk about something really, really useful for the useful for the developer. This like Anisha, you want to anticipate this or? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so as Gio said today, we've got a really cool topic. Um, so as Android developers or Fire OS developers, I'm sure you've come across um device messaging. So what we actually have is a really cool way for you to take the abstraction away from you know. Uh, FCM or Amazon device messaging, and we've got a new SDK for you to do this. So today we're going to be talking about Amazon device messaging, um, a new feature of Amazon device messaging, which is push notifications, and our new SDK, A3L. So lots to cover today. Nice. Um, yes. I hope you guys are excited. So yeah, while we before we jump in, a few housekeeping rules. So use the chat to ask us questions. We're here for you. Uh, we're here to help you. You can also use the hashtag Amazon Fireside Chat if you're joining from Twitter or LinkedIn to, you know, hashtag the chat and we can answer those questions too. Um, when you do hashtag or you comment in the chat, just be respectful, uh, use mindful language. We want to create a great environment for everybody. Um, so, yes, without further ado, uh, should Wait. we jump in then? Yes, yes, yes. Let's jump in. We, I mean, I will start speak, talking about mm -hmm. Amazon device messaging. So something that I think I um, my screen shared. Yes, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nisha. So I will start talking about Amazon device messaging. This is like one of our uh, our main SDK for messaging, like for device messaging, and now it's supporting push notifications. So if you were if you previously were using these to use like uh, device, to, to do device messaging between uh, Amazon Fire device, now you can support, now you can use this for the push notification as well. So if you need like to know, if you need to let your user know that uh, your game has an update or maybe a message from a friend of your user is arrived, you can use the push notification. Let's see how. So first of all, I want to just recap the three key principles of ADM. So is we said that it's protected because it's all the connection for ADM, all the connection that ADM is using are protected via the old 2.2 service verification. And the uh, connection is encrypted with, uh, with SSL standard. It's flexible because you can use the message that you want with just using JSON format, JSON object format for the for the messages. And you can use messages uh, with sites up to six kilobyte. And it's simple to use because we are not assuming any uh, user, any weird or particular user interface for the push notification. You will just use the one mm, that the system is supporting. And here we are not doing data handling of the uh, messages that you will develop for your user, for your app. So these are the three key principles. The message flow of a message supported by ADM is this one. So you will have your server. If you want, uh, your server will send the message and connect and log in with the ADM servers to send the message. You have the ADM server, ADM server that is sending all the, uh, the connection with the client and sending the message by your side. Then we have the ADM client that is the part of the ADM, the ADM SDK that is running inside your uh, devices. It is receiving the message and passing them to your app. And then we have the and then we have your app. So you are uh, for, you have four, con four components and you can control of this like up to two. So your servers and your app. And you don't need to think about all the hassle and configuration about all the other stuff. So. Let's jump on about talking about how do we set up ADM. So first of all, we need to go to the Amazon device, Amazon developer, developer.amazon.com SDK download. That is the one way to go to download all the all our other SDK. So Amazon device messaging SDK is here for you as well, and you can download the zip file of the ADM, like in this slide. Then you have to 
at the DM to your project. So as an Android developer, you already know probably how to do this, but let's recap this. So you just extract the zip file into a directory or your laptop or computer, whatever you want, and then copy the Amazon device messaging jar file into the libs folder of your project, okay? So that's it, simple and easy. Then after this, you have to right-click the jar file from Android Studio, if you're using Android Studio, and click on the top, on the bottom of the dialog that you, uh, you will, uh, that Android Studio will display, add as a library. This will add the dependency line onto the build Gradle file. But because the library, so ADM, it's only used at a compile time, we need to change that implementation keyword inside the build log file from implementation to compile only. And this will allow the uh, SDK to be correctly handled during the build time. Otherwise, you will have some error. That's it. You already set up and uh, with these steps, you, are, you have already set up ADM. To integrate, let's see how we do it. So um, integrate ADM. Remember to, the, like, to get the extension because we are offering these uh, services with this API based on uh, uh, authorization process. So you have to obtain the credential. It's uh, not a long process, but you can, you can check all the steps at the link below. And then we, uh, I think Anisha, we can post this URL even in the, uh, yeah, in the chat, so that's perfect. Yeah. So uh, to, to do this, I mean, if you are following the step inside the documentation, you can, you will, can, and you will obtain the key uh, from the Amazon developer from my Amazon developer console. Then you have to, uh, after that with the credential, you have to open the Android manifest XML and put the Amazon XML NS on the top on the manifest. So this this second line here of inside the Amazon uh, inside the mani Android manifest XML. So schemas.amazon.com. Then after this. You have to declare the permission to use ADM, to support ADM. And the permission support, the, the, the required permission that you have to use are these in the slide. So receive ADM message, permission to receive, and permission, obviously, internet and wake clock. And uh, the receive ADM messenger with the protection level signature. This is the set of permission that you have to use inside your app to use ADM. Then we need to uh, explicitly enable the feature of ADM, uh, declare, it, declare it explicitly inside the manifest. And you can do this using enable feature tag inside the Android manifest. So using this line of, uh, this line of code, enable feature, uh, device messaging required are false, and that's it. Then we can jump straight away to the code because we already did all the, the required configuration to use ADM. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to declare, a, um, and inside the manifest, I mean, before jumping into the code, we need to declare even the services that we are using to uh, listen for the messaging. So we did, need to declare a broadcast receiver, a broadcast receiver, sorry, to handle the registration and receive the instance that ADM sends. And then ADM requires that we define even the receiver in the Android manifest file. Uh, so immediately after the uh, Amazon enable feature, you have to declare the receiver, like in the slide. So pretty pretty simple. Then uh, we need to check, we need to take the API key uh, from the Amazon developer console and put in a file inside the asset folder of our, of our under project in a file called API key.txt. And this is the one that you have to use. So uh, remember to use this file name and put it to the right folder. The, uh, for the debug, you will have to use a debug key. For uh, the release, you will have to use also the, uh, another debug key as well. So uh, take into account uh, all the keys that you need for uh, using a uh, for using ADM. Then we can just now we can jump to the code. So. How can we set up, how can we start ADM from the code? So we just need to uh, instantiate a new, uh, create a new instance of ADM, like in the slide, and start the registration process. Now, the start, starting the, re the registration process is as simple as calling ADM.startRegister. This will call the registration process. If this registration process or is, uh, was already uh, called before, you will have a registration ID. So it's better to check before in advance if the registration ID is present 
don't do anything. If instead, if the get registration ID, that is the registration ID of the device to, to the ADM is null, you have to call start register again. So this is the uh, this is starting the, pro the process to register for ADM and to use ADM. Then ADM is based, uh, I mean, the, the, to handle the registration and the messages from ADM, uh, we have three main classes. So ADM message handler job base, ADM message handler base, and ADM message receiver. So the two uh, message handler job base and message handler base are two different, I mean, they are doing the same thing, but we are using them to uh, handle message one, the first one on the latest fire device. The second one, so NDM message and their base, if you want to support and, and, and handle the message on the older fire devices. The message receiver instead is the one that you already probably know about. It is the one that is uh, allowing to forward the message, um, allowing the forwarding of the message to the appropriate message handling class of your application. Let's see how. So. First of all, you need to choose, remember that I told you that you have two job vendor. Yes, as long as you are considering the new fire devices or old fire devices, yes, you have to check which uh, job vendors you have to use. And to do this, you have to check the ADM version running on the device. So if the check if the uh, ADM services ADM service is running on the device on your device is the last one. Then after this, you can decide which class of the job receiver uses. Let's see. The message gender class that you want to create to handle the registration uh, event and the message event from ADM is something that you have to uh, create extending from ADM message handler job base. And these are four main callbacks. The first one is the all registered, and this called when the registration ID is ready. So when the registration is uh, completed. And here you will receive the registration ID. So if you need to do something like pass the registration ID to your server, do it in this part of code. Then we have the on unregistered. This is like pretty easy from the name to understand what is the, why, when this is called. It's called when the devices are registered. So let's say that uh, we want to inform our services to deregister, to unregister the app from uh, the uh, all the process. You have to do it from here. A registration error to handle error uh, during the registration. You can like uh, want to notify you. You will want here to notify the user that something uh, happened, some issue happened, and then maybe gracefully handling the error. And then we have the on message. This is like the main uh, callback you will want to use because it's the one where you will receive the message. So you can actually extract the data content from the message and do something uh, with your message inside your app. So uh, this is all about the code, the configuration and code of ADM. I don't know, Anisha, if you have some question here from the audience. Um, no questions yet, but guys, yeah, please okay. drop your questions in the chat. Um, so we kind of wanted to do like two steps to this. So we know as you know, some of our existing developers might be using ADM. Um, we wanted to kind of walk through what ADM was first, but for, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a new developer and you don't want to integrate with ADM, that's the second part we're going to jump into in a bit, which is A3L. So that's how you can integrate with ADM and, um, fire cloud messaging. So it, we're just kind of like, you know, making sure that there is an understanding of what ADM is. Maybe you don't use FCM. Um, so it's important to, you know, if you just want to use ADM to kind of realize that. And this is the exciting part for those developers who do already use ADM. So we didn't have this functionality before. And now you can send push notifications to your devices. And we're going to be doing a demo of this um, at the yeah. end. So stay tuned. And we have a have demo, a yes. Nice. That's, that's, we have a demo now today. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. So actually, let's say that you already integrated ADM or, or maybe, yeah, we'll see a 3M later. And that you want to see, you want to send a push notification. How can we do this? We are offering a console, a web console that you can use to do all this process. 
uh, is as, uh, is available from developer.amazon.com uh, from the um, from the web console of your uh, of your application, and then here you can I mean you can see the UI on the slides uh, of this uh, of the ADM console. You have to select the app. You have to the target app of the message that you want to send. You have to send the, you have to put the client ID and secret. That is something you will find in the developer console. Developer console. Uh, the device registration ID that remember is the one that you will get when you will complete the registration, when your app will complete the registration with ADM. And then like the expired date of your message and what type of message you want to send to the user. Before we were supporting the, uh, the data message, now we are supporting the notification message as well. And you can use this to send the push notification. And we are also offering a mixed uh, kind of message, so data and notification message that is, will handle, it will be handled as a push notification, but will, con be con will contain inside also some data that you can use inside your app to do something like uh, whatever, but it will contain some data that you can use. Uh, another way to send the message is by uh, using a server-side script. You can find uh, the ones one sample script inside the zip file of the ADM, the one that you can download from the Amazon developer uh, website, or you can uh, check the sample at this URL. So pretty, pretty easy to, to check, go to this URL, uh, check the Python script, and you can use that one to send a message. Uh, like I said, there are three kinds of messages that we are supporting with ADM, data messages, that is, End of by your app and as a defined uh, key value pairs. So, like you can see in this slide, and you can send like you can send data message if you want to use custom logic to process a message, like sending a message to your app background task. Then we have the notification message that will be handled by the SDM SDK, and they're also defined by preset key value pairs. And then you can use the push notification if you want to display automatically something to the user. Oh, we have data and notification. So this uh, data and notification message is like, like I said before, it's a mix between data and notification. So we will have custom key value pairs and predefined uh, key value pairs for the notification and data from the custom. So this is what we are offering for, if you are already using ADM, I suggest you uh, to extend the functionality of your app you know, with a push notification and how we are supporting. But if you are supporting even FCM, uh, we have another product and that's, uh, I will leave Anisha uh, talking about this. Awesome, thanks Gio. Thank you. Um, yeah, so A3L, so what is A3L? So A3L, is a app store independent library um, that allows you to reduce the effort it takes to you know, port and maintain your code. Because with A3L, you can write your code one time and use that same code for your apps uh, to submit to both the Google Play Store and the Amazon App Store. Uh, and as developers, we all love you know, things that make coding easier. So this is great. You, you only have one thing to maintain versus two. So without A3L, when you, when you were to add a feature in your app, such as cloud messaging, you might have to implement one solution for Android devices and one solution for Fire OS devices. But now when you use this new SDK, it handles those solution specific details for you. So it provides a common interface that allows you to create that one implementation for, AD, for ADM and for A3L, uh, sorry, for FCM, so for Android and Fire OS devices. Um, so, under the hood, A3L has a dependency on FCM for Android devices and ADM for Fire OS devices. So why should you care about A3L? Um, other than the fact that it makes it easier for you to develop and port and maintain your code between Amazon App Store and third-party app stores, um, there is another benefit. So what it also does is it provides a common interface that allows you to handle that one implementation well, it under the hood does the solution specific details for you. Um, next, so the third benefit is when you write code once, it reduces that effort to port to maintain your code. So yeah, well, no reason why you shouldn't do this if you're using FCM and ADM. Oh, okay. 
Um, so let's have a look at like the different features that are offered by like say FCM, ADM versus A3L. So the green shows features that are supported by Android devices and the black are the features supported by Fire OS devices. So as you can see, FCM supports a range of them. ADM supports the ones that are specific to Amazon devices. So push notifications, data messages, push notifications with data and single device messaging. However, A3L SDK supports all the FCM ones and the ADM ones together. Um, for example, you can send push notifications to engage with your users, or you can send custom data messages as you would if you were integrating with these two um, separately. So I'm sure you're all wondering, how can we implement it? So that's where we come in. Um, so the A3L messaging has depends on you know the messaging solutions, FCM and ADM. So the first step, as Gio said, for ADM is to obtain the credentials and to add your API key to your project. Um, if you don't know where to find this, don't worry, we're gonna do a little demo of, of how you can get your API key and how you can add it to your project. Um, if not, there's a link here for you to be able to do that. Uh, as for SCM, you first have to create your Firebase project and register your app with Firebase. Um, once you've done this, you'll obtain your Google services JSON config file, and then you add that to your project and add the mentioned class path to your build grado file. So I'm gonna show this to you in you know, a sample application very shortly so you can know what I'm talking about. Uh, next, you'll need to add the A3L messaging SDK as a dependency. So for this, there are a couple steps too that you have to do. So the first thing is to download the SDK. Um, and this link can be found uh, on our developer portal on our SDK downloads page, which we can also pop in the chat if you need. Uh, second, you have to add the AAR file to your project's libs folder. So when you download the SDK, it will contain the AAR file, which you can then you know just copy into your lib folder. And this can either be done, you know, through Android Studios as you're probably used to, um, or you can do it, you know, in your Finder. Next, you will have to add A3L messaging and Firebase as dependencies in your build gradle. Um, you know, you can you can pull these from Maven, or you can add them as you know part of your library. So in the case of A3L, I've just added it to my libs and I'm using it um, directly. And finally, you'll have to sync uh, to make sure that your app is up to date with these current um, dependencies. So once you've integrated it, you need to implement it. Um, so how do you actually implement the SDK? So the first step is to extend the A3L messaging service class, which is part of the A3L messaging SDK. And this is what allows your app to receive messages. So you'll need to override two methods, um, on message received, which is when a message is delivered to your app instance, and on new token call, which is when a new device ID for the app is ready. So I'll show you again this in, in, in a demo app, but this is what you have to do. You have to override these two methods. And this is just a demo of an implementation with the class named my A3L messaging service. So as you can see, those are the two classes, methods that were overridden. Um, and then that's where you know, you put in what you would want to specify your message to be. Um, and if you wanted to start your asynchronous tasks, you can also do that there. So next, you'll have to update your manifest file to receive messages. So you will need to declare like an implementation of the A3L messaging service class as a receiver. So this is what allows you to handle the registration and messaging intents. So this is an example of, you know, my manifest using my A3L messaging service as a placeholder. So this would, you'd have to replace this with your implementation of the A3L messaging service class. So whatever you named it as. And finally, on the onCreate method, you have to initialize the A3L messaging um, service and retrieve the device ID. And this is important as this device ID is how we test sending a notification. Um, and so you will need the device ID of the device where you installed your application to be able to test it. Uh, so finally, we will initialize and create an instance of the abstract class on init callback and pass it to A3L messaging dot init method as seen in this example. So as you can see, we were declaring our instance of on init callback um, right here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, where's it gone? Oh, right there. Um, and that's where we're passing it 
the to, to initializing it and passing it to the ethereal messaging dot init class service service not class sorry so once you've implemented it you're probably wondering how you can integrate the sdk and test your app so there's three ways you can do this so the first one is by sending a test message to the console so geo walk through this so i won't go into it again um, but this is the console that will pop up and you can use it as you would test with adm um, you know when you have implemented ADM. So the second way is to test with the Firebase console. So again, if you've implemented with Firebase, like you'll be able to test uh, as you would if you'd implemented with the cloud messaging service tab, and then you can add a new notification. And once you put in the correct fields, like your device ID, um, and add an FCM registration token, your device uh, will be receiving the message. So this is just a little clip of how you would do that. So the other two ways you can test is again with the server side scripts that Gio mentioned. So we have one for ADM, as Gio said, and we also now have one for FCM. So these are Python scripts that would send a notification to your FireOS device and Android device respectively. Um, so you can just run these straight off from your terminal. And if you've got your device connected, it will push a notification to your device. Or you could test with solution specific APIs. So both FCM and ADM have APIs that you can use to send messages to your devices. Um, and for more details on that, you can check out this link on screen um, that will take you to more details on how you can use the APIs. So you've got your app implemented, tested. Now you want to troubleshoot. So there is a couple of ways you can troubleshoot. So all A3L messaging keys will have an appended prefix of A3L.notification before the base field name. And this prefix is what helps avoid those collisions with Android notification keys, uh, which may have similar field names. So A3L messaging notification keys behave the same as the corresponding Android notification field. And the data type and functionality of the field is the same. And this kind of just shows you a full list of what the A3L messaging notification fields are and the corresponding Android notification fields. So you, when you're testing, you can differentiate between the two. So super useful. Um, well, I'm sure now you, you're wondering, how can you see this live? So I will hand over to Gio. And sorry, you might have heard some background noise. I think it's summer, so everyone's doing some gardening. Um, so I'll hand over to Gio to do a really cool demo of how yeah. easy it is to do A3L and ADM um, integrations. Yeah, so actually uh, I have the source code of the demo app that you can download from our documentation. Mm -hmm. like I think we can put the uh, yeah. URL in it. And the thing is like, uh, it's pretty easy if you just download the uh, SDK, uh, the, if you download the, the source code from the zip file, uh, you will have all your projects set up and the documentation will explain to you how to set up all the credentials that you need to do uh, the test of A3L and ADM. Uh, this application is an Android app that also containing inside a way to send the message. So it acts, it, this app acts not only as a client, but even as a server. So uh, inside the assets folder of the Android project, I think you. Oh, can sorry, Gio. I think you might need to increase the font size so everybody can uh, see well. Uh, yes, yes. yes <laughs> always hard. We always code. With yeah, it's hard. Anyway, so. yeah. I mean, inside the assets folder, you will have three files. Okay, the ADM server configuration .json and FCM server configuration .json. Uh, I don't want to open it now because inside there are my credentials, so the credentials of my server and my API key. So I, I will just light, I light here. I think they are too small to see it, but yeah, you will, you can check if you download the, uh, the demo application. So here you have to insert your server keys to send the message. This is only for the demo. And then there is the API key.txt. That is the file that I told you before if, that you need to integrate ADM. So it contains your key, your personal key for the ADM, okay? Uh, this is pretty much what you need to do. Ah, you have to include also the Google services.json of your Firebase project file that you can download for the, from the Firebase console. Uh, pretty much all the code is set up uh, like Anisha already explained to you. So we have the my uh, message services, my A3L message services. I think, 
Oops, sorry. But, yeah, no problem. <laughs> and now I, I can increase here the, yeah. This is the services that Anisha was talking, uh, was talking about. So you have to extend from A3L messaging services, and then you will have uh, to uh, implement the callback like on message receive on your on new token, and that's it. So if I run this up on a uh, Android device, so let's say that I have the emulator. I guess you can see the emulator now. Yes. So. If you run this up inside your emulator or your own Android device running the uh, Google Play services, so you want in this case you will want to use the Firebase messaging FCM, you will have the UI with the send push notification. If you click send push notification, you will see that a push notification is arrived, and then you will see that the snack bar displaying the push notification to the user, and even we see we can see the device ID of the device registered through the FCM platform. So this is the app demo running on a device running the Google Play services. If you want, if it's instead, if we run the same demo app on one of our uh, Fire devices, so let's see, in this case, I have the Fire tablet 10 inches. Uh, it's locked, so let's go there and uh, I click. It is the same app. Obviously, this is like the extended is interface because I'm running on a tablet. And if I click send push notification, I can see that I have the dialog here saying check uh, notification tray for notification. So it means that a notification arrived. And then I can see that some notification has arrived from the top. And I see the device ID coming from the ADM platform. It means that this means that the device was registered inside the ADM platform and the returns an ID that you can use inside your server to send the messages. So this is more or less the, uh, the demo. You can find the code at the URL I will post it. And then I don't know if you have a question about it, I can show you the code again. Yeah, guys, um, please drop your questions in the chat. Yeah. Uh, we're more than happy to answer any questions you may have about the implementation of A3L, the implementation of ADM, or, you know, just tell us that this demo is really cool. <laughs> yeah, um, You can see how easy it is, like, you know, to send notifications to both devices. Um, so you're covering all your grounds. Go for it, Joe, sorry. In the, no, in the meantime, I was just playing sending push notifications to the devices, like sample A3L messaging up here, like this is the notification. Mm -hmm. Just this. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like as you can see, like you can even change the notifications you want directly from the console, um, or you can test it with um, all the ways we said. So your Python scripts, your ADM console, or the APIs. Lots of ways to test, or you could just try our, our sample app. Um, make sure you put your own credentials in, and then you'll be able to test it just like you. Yeah, I'm playing with the notification now. <laughs> <laughs> Just sending himself loads of notifications. Yes. Yeah. Um, Do we yeah, have some guys, questions? Any, any questions from the audience? Anything you'd like to hear about? Or any questions from previous sessions? So in the meantime, like maybe we can introduce next week's topic. So next week, we wanted to kind of hear from you. Um, do you want to have a office hours with Gio and I? So obviously, you know, it's a great opportunity to hear directly from Amazon developers um, and the people behind the scenes. So us, we're the evangelists on the apps and games team. And we're here to answer your questions. So say you have a burning technical question that you, you maybe raised a ticket for um, and you haven't heard back yet, or you want to show us some code. Like we'd love to see like what you guys are developing. So if you think this is a good idea, let us know. Um, we don't want to just come here and talk to you about new things. We also want to like answer questions you may have had for your current applications. Um, so definitely drop your questions in the chat right now on A3L ADM. If not, and you think office hours is a good idea, let us know so yeah. we can make sure that we give you guys what you want. Send us a push notification. <laughs> 
Uh, Spiky Sue has a question. My question is, how can I find more than 24 hours in the day? Um, I have the same question. <laughs> I think Gio probably has the same one. <laughs> yeah, I have the um, same as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, if you implement A3L, you might save some time because you won't have to port and maintain your code to two different platforms. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> <laughs> save you a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, we agree. It is, it is not enough hours in the day. Uh, he says, haha, nice answer. Thanks. Um, my little try at comedy over there. <laughs> um, yeah, anybody awesome. else? Any questions? Um, you know, hashtag Amazon for our side chat. Uh, let us know if you think office hours is a good idea. We know we have other teams at Amazon that do office hours. We're still, you know, trying to grow. Um, and if you guys think it's a good idea, let us know and we will make sure we deliver. Uh, any questions on A3L? We are here okay. for you. <laughs> if not, then I think we can call it. Um, if you still, if you remember your questions later, feel free to drop either Gio and I a message. Um, our Twitter handles are down there. Mine's like there <laughs> you can tweet us and we also have um you know all our socials so up there uh you can follow us on twitch so you get notified every time we go live which is every tuesday at six o'clock um or for, tweet us follow us on twitter uh, follow us on youtube tell us where you're watching from tell us where your favorite place to watch us from is um we'd love to know so yeah if not then see you guys next week See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.